Hello and welcome to yet an another lecture on power generation and economics. Paper code EE seven zero four C. Myself, Prakito Rai, Assistant Professor of Dr. Sudhir Chandra Shu, Institute of Technology and Sports Complex, Department of Electrical Engineering. Today, my topic is an overview on economic dispatch. Lesson objective. After the end of this topic, students will be able to understand the concept of economic dispatch. An overview on economic dispatch contains today. I am going to tell about the introduction part, different constraints in economic load dispatch, operating cost of thermal plant, economic dispatch, neglecting, losses, and numerical problems related with economic dispatch. So the introduction part, in power generation, our main aim is to generate the required amount of power with minimum cost. So the main objective in power generation is to meet the load demand at any instant. So in order to meet the load demand, we have to generate the power and another motto is that we have to generate the power keep in mind that the generation cost will be minimum economic load dispatch means that the generators real and reactive power are allowed to vary within certain limits so as to meet a particular load demand within minimum fuel cost this allocation of loads are based on some constraints so economic load is that means that the generator's real and reactive power are allowed to vary within certain limits so as to meet a particular load demand with minimum fuel cost. So different constraints in economic load dispatch First is the inequality constraints, that is the voltage constraints, that the value of the voltage will be lie between the minimum and the maximum value, and also the angle delta will be lie between minimum and maximum value. And that is the generator constraints. The KVL loading of generator should not exceed the pre-described value that is power that is remain within the maximum and the minimum value active and the reactive power both will be there within the maximum and the minimum value that is the KVA loading of the generator will be should not be exceed the pre-described value And there is the running spare capacity constraints. These constraints are needed to meet force outage of one or more alternators in the system and also unexpected load on the system. Another is the transmission line constraints. Flow of power through 
transmission line should less than its thermal capacity. Another is the transformer cap set. For auto transformer cap set, that is step P should be between 0 and 1. For two winding transformer, it will lie between the zero and k. K is the trans ratio. Equality constraint that is called the real power and the reactive power constraint. It is clearly seen that the real power that is PP, P suffix P equal to VP. Summation of YPQ PQ cos of theta PQ minus del P plus del Q, that is the PQ or the generally bad bars. And the reactive power, same QP equal to PP. Summation of YPQ, Ys, and PQ sine of theta PQ minus summation of del P plus del Q. So this is the equality constraint. Now, another part is the operating cost of thermal plant. The factors that influencing the power generation at minimum costs are operating efficiencies of generators, fuel cost and transmission losses. The most efficient generator in the system doesn't guarantee minimum cost and it may be located in an area where the fuel cost is high. If the plant is located far from the load center, transmission losses may be high and hence the plant may be overly uneconomical. So it is clear that the factors, that is the operating cost of thermal plant, the factors that are influencing the power generation at minimum cost are operating efficiencies of the generator, fuel cost and transmission losses. It is not that the most efficient generator We generate the power along with minimum cost because the generator may be located in some area where the fuel cost is very high. Now, if the plan that is located far from the low center, transmission losses may consider very high. It is clear that if it is located far from the low center, the transmission losses is very high and hence the plant may be uneconomical. So in order to maintain the operating cost, again the same conception that we have to meet the load demand, but keeping in mind that the generation cost is minimum. So The input to the thermal plant is generally measured in BTU per hour and output is measured in megawatt. So in case of the practical cases, the fuel cost of generator can be represented by a quadratic function of real power generation that is C suffix I equal to alpha i plus beta i pi plus gamma i pi square. So the cost of generation can be represented by a quadratic function and this is the cost of generation is given by c suffix i. So this is the heat rate r where pi the power output in megawatt and 
same input that is B T U per hour, and this is the nature of the graph. And the second one, this is for the heat rate curve, and second one is the fuel cost curve that is power output P I in megawatt, and the cost that is dollar per hour or rupees per hour. We can say anything. And its uh, nature is the quadratic function of real power, and it is clearly seen in this graph. This is the nature of the graph. Graph that is for the heat rate curve and the fuel cost curve. So the input to the thermal power plant is generally measured in BTU per hour. There is the fuel input, and the output is measured in megawatt. And the fuel cost of the generator that can be represented by a quadratic function of real power generation is the quadratic function of real power generation. Pi is the quadratic function of real power generation that is Pi. Ci equal to alpha i plus Pi Pi plus gamma i Pi square. It's a quadratic function of real power real power of the generation that is pi so the corresponding heat rate card and the fuel cost card is also shown here so another part is the incremental fuel cost card So, if I take the first order derivative of that particular equation, that is the cost equation, fuel cost equation DCI, with respect to the real power PI, that is EDPI of CI, we will get the first order derivative of that equation is eta i plus 2 gamma i PI, gamma i PI plus eta i. So, by plotting the derivative of fuel cost curve versus the real power, we get the incremental fuel cost curve. That is the lambda i. Incremental fuel cost curve that is rupees per megawatt hour and pi in megawatt. If I draw the plot between pi and lambda i, we will get a curve like this y equal to mx plus c so you get a curve like this pattern so that this is called the incremental fuel cost the incremental fuel curve cost curve is a measure of how costly it will be to produce the next increment of the power so you always concentrate Keep in mind the load demand that will be a variable means it will change continuously. In order to keep in mind that the load demand, the conception in and also to meet the load demand, the conception of incremental fuel cost is there. So the incremental fuel cost curve is a measure of how costly it will be produce the next increment of power. So, another part of our discussion is economic dispatch when we neglecting the losses. So, here we are seeing the load demand is PD. 1, 2, up to NG generators are there or alternators and their costs are C1, C2 up to CNG in order to meet the load demand. It is the simplest economic dispatch problem by regulating the losses. Assume that the system is only one bus with all generation and loads connected to it. A cost function that is CI is assumed to be known for each of the plant, C1, C2 is known for each of the plant, and the real power that is generated by that particular plant is P1, P2 up to PNG, and PD is the demand, and they are connected to a, only one bus with 
all generation and loop. Only one bus is there where all the generations and the loop are connected to a single bus. Well, the problem is to find the real power generation for each plant such that the objective function that is the production cost is defined by the equation C suffix T equal to summation over 1 to N G the total number of generators or the plants total number of generators are there C I that is the summation of production cost of all the generators generator 1, generator 2 are all the uh, say the generation so gener alternators uh, in 1, 2 up to in G so production cost total production cost is the summation of each production cost that is C1, C2 up to C in G so it is the objective function it is the generally done that is the total production cost we define to find the real power generation for each plants. So we can say that the total number of plants or the generators or the alternators are from i equal to 1 to n and we just put the values of ci here that is alpha i plus theta i pi i plus gamma i pi i square because problem is to find the real power generation for each plan such that the objective function will be the total production cost is defined by the equation CT and the putting the value of CI here we just found that, that for the each plan we have to calculate the cost and for the n number of plans we have to sum the cost of each plan in order to find the total production cost. And it is minimum when it is subjected to the constraint that is i equal to summation over i equal to 1 to a pi equal to it means p is the load demand and pi is the generation for the ith unit. Now summation over i equal to 1 to n means this is the summation of generation for first, second, third up to n unit and it is maintain the load demand it is an another constraint that is summation over i equal to 1 to NTPI that is the real power of i is generator equal to PB. So if there are three generators are in the system so means P1, P2 plus P3 equal to PD that they are getting the load demand. If there are NG generators are in the system that is P1, P2, P3 up to PNG equal to PD made the load demand. So a typical approach to this augment the constraints into objective function by using the Lagrangian multipliers. So we can write the Lagrangian function that is equal to CT plus lambda into PT minus summation over i equal to 1 to n g pi is a typical approach to make a Lagrange function. That is the general conception in order to find the Lagrange function. That is ct Lagrange function equal to c sub x t plus lambda of pd minus i equal to one, summation over 1 to n g pi the minimum cost, the minimum of this unconstrained function is found at the point where the partials of the function to its variable are zero. So this unconstrained function in order to find the minimum of that unconstrained function, we have to take the first order derivative, the partials, that is del del pi of the Lagrangian function is equal to 0. Del del lambda of Lagrangian function is equal to 0. That is a mean 
minimum of the unconstrained function is found at the point where the partial of the function whose variables are zero. So there are two variables. One is the lambda, that is the Lagrange multiplier, and another is the pi, that is the real power. So if I take the first order partials of the Lagrange function with respect to those two constraints, or with respect to these two variables, we can say, and equating it with zero, we will get the minimum of this unconstrained function. So the first condition, that is partial of the Lagrangian function with respect to pi equal to zero, that is resulting this equation. So partial of this equation with respect to pi will result this equation. So we all know that the total cost is the summation of C1, C2 up to C and G. So from that particular equation, we can write that D, D, Pi of C T equal to D D C I P Y equal to lambda because this one is equal to lambda. So the partial became the first order derivative of ith generators or alternators with respect to Pi that is D D P I of C I the cost function of ith generator became lambda. Therefore, the condition for optimum dispatch is PI of CI, that is the for the ith unit is equal to lambda when i stands for 1, 2, 3 up to mg or dv first order derivative of CI with respect to PI is known as beta i plus 2 gamma i pi equal to lambda. When losses are neglected with no generator limits, for most economic operation, all plants must operate at equal incremental production cost. So the production cost from each plant can be found that is Pi equal to lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i. I equal to lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i. This equation is known as the coordinate equation. For analytic solution, we can find the lambda by summation over i equal to 1 to ng, that is the total number of generators. Pi equal to Pd. So in the case of Pi, we can write lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i equal to Pd. So from there, we can find the lambda equal to Pd plus summation over i equal to 1 to ng beta i by 2 gamma i. Total will be divided by summation over i equal to 1 to ng 1 by 2 gamma i. Can find the value of lambda from that particular equation. From that particular equation, it is the total generation equal to total load demand. Just putting the value of pi here, and from there we can easily calculate the value of lambda. So, in an iterative technique, starting with the values of lambda. And the process is continued until LPI is within a specified equation. Corresponding to this, the lambda that is i equal to summation over 1 to ng pi to the power k is calculated, and the power mismatch is calculated by del p to the power k that is del pk equal to pd minus 
summation over i equal to 1 to n g t i k. So means the particular LP is calculated within a specified accuracy. So we can now update the value of lambda by lambda del lambda to the power k equal to del p to the power k divided by summation over 1 by 2 comma i. So the updated value of that is the updated value of lambda means that new value of lambda that is lambda to the power k plus 1 that is the new value is the previous value of the lambda that is lambda to the power k plus change in lambda that is del lambda to the power k. The new value of the lambda that is k plus 1 is the previous value of the lambda plus change in the lambda in order to find the new value of the lambda. So let us start with an example in order to understand that what we have learned till now. So the fuel cost function for three plants in rupees or dollar per hour and given that C1 equal to 500 plus 5.3 P1 plus 0 0.002 P1 squares C2 equal to 400 plus 5.5 P2 plus 0 0.006 P2 squares P3 equal to 200 plus 5.8 P3 plus 0 0.09 P2 square where P1, P2, P3 are megawatt and the total load demand that is P is 100 megawatt neglecting the line losses and general limits find the optimal dispatch and the total cost in this power hour or dollar per hour by analytical method by graphical demonstration, by iterative technique using gradient method. So first we have to find the lambda. So this is the general equation of lambda that is known to us. It is alpha, beta and gamma. So the PV, the load demand is 800 plus summation over 1 to 3. It will be there are 3 units. So, beta i by 2 gamma i means 5.3 by 2 into 0 0.004, that is 0 0.008 plus, this is the beta part, 5.5 by, this is the gamma part for the second unit, 2 into 0 0.006, that is 0 0.012, and third one is the, this part, that is 5. 0.8 divided by 2 into 0 0.009 that is 0 0.018 total divided by summation over 1 to ng means 1 to 3 here 1 by 2 gamma i this is the gamma part alpha part beta part and the gamma part so it will be 1 by 2 gamma i means 1 by 0 0.008 plus 1 by 0 0.012 plus 1 by 0 0.018 and the value of lambda is 8.5 rupees per megawatt hour. So the value of the lambda is using that particular formula is 8.5 rupees or dollar per megawatt hour. So now substituting the for lambda in the coordinate equation. The optimal dispatch that we have found, so we are using that particular equation, that one, pi equal to lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i. So using that equation, we will get p1 equal to, so lambda is 8.5 minus beta i, that is 5.3 that we have seen, beta i my by 2 gamma i. So beta i here, Lambda means 8.5 minus 5.3 divided by 2 into 0 0.004 to find P1. That is 400 megawatt. For P2, it will be 8.5. 8.5 minus 5.5 divided by 2 into 0 0.006. 
that is 250 megawatt for P3, it will be 8.5 minus 5.8 divided by 2 into 0 0.009, that is 150. So we have found the P1, P2, and P3. Now, the necessary condition for the optimal dispatch that is first order derivative of P1, that is the cost function with respect to P1, that is GDP1 of C1, we just take the first order derivative, it will be 5.3 plus. 0.008 P1, that one equal to lambda. The second one would be P2 of C2, that is 5.5 plus 0.012 P2, that is lambda. And the third one is P3 of C3, that is 5.8 plus 0.018 P3, 0.018 P3, 5.8 plus 0.018 P3 equal to lambda. So if I plot the rupees versus megawatt, hour and power, uh, that is the power P in megawatt, now we can easily find the three plots that is nothing but y equal to nx plus c plot, y equal to nx plus c. So we will get a three plots like that. One, two, and three. So the third part is the numerical solution. The third part is the numerical solution using the gradient method. So in order to find the gradient method, we have to select our value of lambda. Say we are selecting a value of lambda, that is lambda to the power 1 or lambda 1, that is to say is 6.0. So again we are using the conception of same calculation for the P1 to the power 1, that is the first condition, that is the first iteration, we can say for the first iteration, we are founding the value of P1, the power generated by the unit 1, that is 6.0, we are considering the lambda value is 6.0, so 6.0 minus 5.3 divided by 2 into 0 0.004, 7.500 lambda same process the same formula that we have used here this one lambda minus beta i divided by 2 gamma i for pi calculation and for p2 for the first duration it will be 6.0 minus 5.5 divided by 2 into 0 0.006 it will be 41.667 41.6667 and another is the P3 for the first iteration it will get 6.0 minus 5.8 divided by 2 into 0 0.009 that is 11.1111 so our total load demand is 800 megawatt so what is the error for the First iteration that is del P it will be 800 minus summation of these three powers that is P1, P2, and the P3 for the first iteration. And the error became 659.7222. So, del of lambda for the first iteration that we will calculate the del of lambda for the first iteration that. We will calculate using that particular conception that is del pk by summation of 
1 by 2 gamma i. So that is easily calculated by del p k means del p1 for the first iteration that is 659.722 plus 1 by 2 gamma i means 1 by 2 into point 0 0.004 plus 1 by 2 into 0 0.006 plus 1 by 2 into 0 0.009 that is 1 by 2 gamma i and gamma is counting from here to this region this one is the gamma for first unit for second unit this one for third unit this one we are using the conception of this particular equation to find the change in lambda so it will be found at 2.5 so therefore the new value of the lambda that is for the second iteration the lambda became we are considering at 6.0 now we are using that particular equation that lambda to the or k plus 1 for the k plus 1 iteration it will be lambda to in the previous iteration plus change in lambda from the previous iteration so it will be change in lambda that is found 2.5 so the new lambda value for the iteration 2 will be 6.0 plus 2.5 that is 8.5 so now again we are computing that value of p1 p2 and p3 for the second iteration but the lambda value is 8.5 the new lambda value that we have obtained that is 8.5 so again we are putting the equation here is p1 for the second iteration it will be 8.5 minus 5.3 divided by 2 into 0 0.004 that is 400 for the calculation of p2 for the second iteration it will be 8.5 the new value of lambda is 8.5 minus 5.5 divided by 2 into 0 0.006 that is 250 and for the third iteration that is p3 for the uh, uh, for the second iteration the value of p3 is 8.5 minus 5.8 divided by 2 into 0 0.009 that is 150 now the change in p that is the error that we have calculated for the second iteration the demand is 800 800 minus 400 plus 250 plus 150 that is 00, 0. so there is no requirement for the addition of lambda new L lambda so we can say that this is this is the economical condition where in order to make the load demand of 800 megawatt the generation from the unit one that is p1 is 400 megawatt from unit two that is p2 is 250 megawatt and from unit three from unit three that is p3 is 150 megawatt Considering in mind the economic load conception or economic load scheduling conception. So the total fuel cost is the economic is well, that is CP. We can just put the values of CP is the summation of C1 plus C2 plus C3, where you are using that equation of C1, C2, and C3. Only putting the value of P1 equal to 400, P2 equal to 250, and P3 equal to 150. We have to put the values that is C1, P2, and P3 in this three equation and summing those C1 plus C2 plus C3 will get the total cost. So the total cost will be. C suffix C T equal to 500 plus 5.3 into 400 that is the value of P1 in that particular equation that's putting the value of P1 in the particular equation of C1 plus 0 0.004 into 400 square plus 400 plus 5.5 into 250 that is the P2 value plus 0 0.006 into 250 square plus 200 plus 5.8 into 
150, that is the fixed rate value plus 0 0.009 into 150 square equal to 6682.5 dollar per hour or rupees per hour, that is 6682.5 dollar per hour or the rupees per hour, that is the total cost. Total cost is the summation of C1 plus C2 plus C3 and the economic load dispatch conception. We are founding that P1, P2, P3 are 400, 250, and 150. Just putting those values here in this equation 400, 250, and 150 of P1, P2, and P3 in the equation C1, C2, and C3. And then summing up C1, C2, and C3, we will get the total cost. After putting P1 equal to 400, P2 equal to 250, and P3 equal to 150. That is P1 400 megawatt, P2 250 megawatt, and P3 150 megawatt. 400, 250, 150 for P1, P2, P3. Just putting those values in the equation of C1, C2, C3, and then summing the C1, C2, C3, we will get the total 12 cost. So today we have seen an overview on economic dispatch. Thank you.